Well, hello, knitters and crocheters. It's Catherine Kirby, Knitting and Crocheting Podcast, and I'm back. It's now February. It's a very early morning. I've been awake all night, full of ideas and things, and just decided, you know what? It's time to do a podcast. So here I am. I have the table piled all kind of things. So I wonder what you all have been doing. And it's very encouraging. I own a yarn shop and I'm having new people all the time that are learning how to knit and crochet either on YouTube or taking lessons. And I have students and it's great. And today the shop had ladies in talking and laughing and that's one thing i have really missed with the COVID shutdown is people got somber and they they weren't i hadn't heard laughter in months so it's great so how many of you remember the mile a minute crocheted afghans and baby blankets um, probably the 80s, but you still see them in books. You do a strip and then you do more strips. So there's a lady on YouTube and she has patterns on Ravelry. Her name is Olga and she does a scarf where you do the strip and then when you get halfway done the second strip, you start joining it. And this is going to be a lacy scarf, although uh, one lady did make a shawl. And when it's blocked, it will be a lot lacier, but I'm, I'm liking it. I'm having fun with it. And this is a mercerized cotton in a DK weight called Katia Lunas. And I think I'm going to do three, three panels. Her scarf, I think, has four. But you know, in art, an odd number is always more interesting than an even number. And so that's that. And that's how long it is. So next podcast, hopefully I will show you this. I have things that I don't even have here, but oh well, we'll just go with what we have. I finally finished my granddaughter's uh, scapulae. This is knitted and it's meant to be a short little top. Um, you could do puffy sleeves, but my sleeves just kind of look flat. So I don't know if I want to try to gather them a little bit. I mean, she's skinny or just let them like that. I'm not really sure what to do. I decided to go with different color buttons and I ran out of yarn. This is Ella Ray Sunkissed and it's discontinued. So I had another blue yarn, cotton yarn, DK weight. And so when I did the button band, same size needle, it pulled tightly together like an arc. And I thought that's not gonna work. So I ripped it out and I bound it all very loosely and it still like wanted to pull together like that. So I pulled it out both sides and did it very, very loosely. Thought if this doesn't work, I'm just going to go with the bigger size needle. But this is a paper pattern by Kelly Brooker of Pika Pika Designs. And I'm just hoping it fits her because when you knit for kids while you're knitting or crocheting, <laughs> they're growing. So having finished this, you all saw a bunch of uh, baby sweaters a few months back with a pattern called Sam, Sidera, and Katie. And I've shown you this little sweater before. It's out of a Louisa, Louisa Harding cotton yarn, 
Huh, it's funny, that looks kind of more orangey colors where actually this is a lot of pinks and purples. And I decided to do, the pattern gives you three options. Oh, that's sad that this doesn't show its pretty colors. Um, and I told you on a prior podcast, I have the color on backwards. So you won't see it. This little child has this wrapped up around her neck. But having finished this, I thought, well, what if I did a little crop top, a little short sweater? So I bound off and it wanted to flip. So I realized that I didn't put a ribbing here, which if my color showed, it'd be cute to do a little bit of that ribbing here. But you know what they say in art class? They say, once you know the rules, then you can break them. If you don't know the rules, you can end up with problems. But, um, so I went back. It's really not that hard to rip out um, stitches that are already bound off. You just go into the lower one and start pulling it out. So I decided to bind off in ribbing, even though there's no ribbing at the bottom. And it seems to be better. And then my creative mind has just been spinning. And I thought, what if I took lace, little, and sewed it to the underside, almost like a little t-shirt or a little shirt peeking out. Thought that might be cute. And then the sleeves, instead of making it long sleeve like the pattern, um, I'm just gonna bind off and see what happens. And I'll show it to you next time. Then I was thinking, what if I did a cute little pocket, put some kind of emblem on it? Um, so yeah, it's been great. I've been getting all kind of ideas and I had a young woman in the shop today. She's um, a fairly new crocheter and I was showing her the different weights of yarn and she said, I don't know anything about this. So you try to explain that the weights of yarn are based on how many stitches you get in four inches. So you have lace weight, 28 to 30 stitches per four inches. Then sport weight is about 25 to 26 stitches. And then DK is 22. Worsted is 18 to 20. Aaron weight or heavy worsted is 16. Chunky's 14. Then you have the super bulky. So it's pretty simple and yet people seem to get just befuddled about it. So I got to thinking the other night that what if I invented sheep characters, cartoonish uh, for the shop and put different sheep characters with the different yarn, like um, the lace weight yarn could be Lacey McPherson or something, do a sheep and, you know, so I have all kinds of ideas. If you have any, write and let me know. And I was thinking of a cat with striped socks named Socks, S-O-X, because I mean, every farm needs a cat, right? And then Big Bertha, the big sheep for the super bulky yarns and so I thought that would be great. And, um, but having said that, it is good to know your yarns because the patterns do call for all different weights of yarn. And so I'll show you this next time. And then for my um, next crochet project, Somebody gave me this a few years ago. He's really cute and said, can you figure out this pattern and I'll be back. Well, Sandy never came back. And so I pulled it out and thought, you know what, he's really cute. Um, 
And a lot of times we buy patterns when we're capable of figuring this out. So I started fooling around and I have a yarn called Universal Highlights that is like a gray, bumpy, um, I was looking to see if I have one sitting here. And I have one that's white with black spots I wanna use for a Dalmatian. Now my hat is smaller than this hat. This yarn is great. It's called Park. And I think to get mine like this, I'm gonna have to take a comb and comb it and pull the fringe out. The ears are circles. So I would have the option of doing a light color in there, like a pink or a very light gray. I was going to just do the ears right onto the hat, but then I don't know that I could do it that way. But anyway, I'm working on my pieces and there's my point for the black nose and I'll do the black eyes and I will whoo, show that to you the next time. So I brought home a bunch of yarns from the shop and my husband said, uh, we're starting to really get like a lot of yarns around the house. I'm like, yeah, I know. This is the Universal Highlight Switch. It's not available anymore, but I have it. It has these little bumps with the colors. I have red and black, white and black, gray and black, but I brought home some combinations. <laughs> and you know what? You wouldn't have to do two strands together, but you gotta admit it's cute. So I brought home some pinks cause I need to get it to match the park yarn that I have. And there's like a pastel and I'm thinking little girly hats. And then I have one that's tan and grays and blues, little pink. And this is fun. There's one with pinks and blues, purples, mulberries. So once I get going with this, I could have a lot of fun. So more about that later. While we're talking about critters, um, I've talked about Holly a lot on the shop. Holly is a customer and she's become a friend and she would always bring her little dog into the shop in this pouch. She was a deer head chihuahua named Cody, kind of similar to this little guy. This is actually a pencil drawing a colored pencil drawing that's in my art collection. I think it's amazing. It's by Yelena Kolostuska out of Australia. And Cody would just sit in her pouch and just enjoy the shop. And if she said, Cody, do you want to go to the yarn shop? He'd get really, really excited. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So the other Saturday, um, they came. And when they left, I felt compelled. I don't know. I walk to the door and I usually say goodbye, Holly. And I said, goodbye, Cody. And that's the last time I saw him because he died that night. And we all really miss him. He's been a regular at the shop for like five years. And everybody, when they see Holly, wants to know where he is. So we miss him. We miss you, Cody. Oh. Debbie Bliss Roma. This yarn is rich with colors, um, like plied together. And there's a sweater called Stracoma. And it's done with a super bulky yarn and a 19 needle. Well, my project got halted because I, um, whoops, didn't have the right size. Sorry for the noise. 
yeah, Strathcona sweater. I didn't have a 1924 inch to finish it. Um, so once the once the needle comes, I will, I think, fly with this. And it's knitting up feeling lightweight because of the big needle size. And wow, actually this is a very dark purple. So I'm surprised that the little bit of tan is showing up so goldish, but there it is. So that will be another thing, hopefully. So going back to the night that Cody died, um, we have a cat named Patches. She's three colored. She's white, black, and like a tannish. And um, one time I made the mistake of telling Megan, Megan has good old tales where I got all of these pets and that, you know, Patches goes out with the dogs when they go outside. And I said, oh, no, I didn't mean that. I meant the other dog. She said, I knew what you meant because Patches is too fancy for that. Well, the night before Cody died, Patches, who watches the animals go out and come in, and we have a, another big cat who goes out and comes in, and she decided that she was going to go out. So I let the two dogs out and she went out and they came in, she came in. So the second night you have to go out into our back porch, which is cold and you have to jump off a step, which the little dog, I'd like to show her to you, but she's in there snoring away. Um, she jumped off the other day and did a belly flop in the snow because we've had snow and it's snowing now. I just let Hartley out when he came in, he was all covered. Um, she went out, but she didn't go out until after they came in. And then I was in here waiting for her and um, I saw that I had a text from Holly and it said that Cody died. And I was just upset. I was upset for her. I was upset because he's so sweet. And my husband and I went to bed and I had trouble sleeping. Well, the next morning, my husband got up first and let the dogs out. I'm all snuggled in bed with my heating blanket cranked up and I hear this horrible cat noise. I mean, I've heard cats in heat, I've heard cat fights, I've seen cats freak out at the vets, but I've never heard noises like this. And I run out in the hallway and there's Patches, three quarters of the way up the steps, sitting on the steps and making these awful noises. I can't even imitate it. And I see my husband at the bottom of the steps and he's laughing. I thought, what? He says to me, you forgot to bring her in last night. Oh. Now, it wasn't a cold night. He said she was fine. She was in the shrubs. He said, you know, when I opened the door, she came in like nothing's gone. Good morning. <laughs> but the closer she got to me, she let me know how upset she was. <laughs> now, if she goes out, she makes sure I'm standing at the door with it wide open waiting for her. Oh, I felt really bad. I did. What can you say? Oh my, I felt bad. Okay. Is this a little baby blanket I'm working on with um, granite stitch, which is single crochet, chain one, skip one and single crochet. And then um, the next row you go into the space that you skipped and I'm doing it with babe, uh, which is your baby yarn, soft cotton worsted. And you know how they always tell you when you do your chain to do it nice and loose? Well, I think I got mine too loose. Seems like I'm having trouble lately with binding on, starting, and I think once this is blocked, 
Well, and I can do an edging. So now the question is if there, I think that shows better that the pink has different tones. Whether I want to just do the whole blanket in this or I want to do stripes in between pink and gray. So what do you think? I mean, you know, there's really no wrong answer. It'd be cute either way. I can picture it in my mind with the gray stripes and the pink stripes and this in between. So anyway, it's nice and relaxing to do. And this is a yarn I have around the shop. Baffo. It has nice colors in it. It reminds me of, oh, I don't know, the sea and cliffs and the way the brownish color is almost like twisted into it. It's a mohair blend. It's a, I think it's a super bulky. And I decided just to Take a big needle, like a size 35, and just garter stitch. And sometimes we forget that just simple stitches are just pretty in themselves. And it's, um, you know, it's not stiff. It folds up really nice. It's soft. And because you do it on big needles, look how big, you know, two rows are. So that's my Baffo scarf. And you can see the pretty tans showing through. Um, there is something called scribble knitting where you take a thin yarn and you do it on the big needles and it gets real scribbly looking. And then you can take a thick yarn and put it here and there. So I'm one of those started at the shop. I will have to bring that home and show it to you. Ah, the Silver Bridge Shawl. I had a lady that came into the shop and she wanted to do a super bulky um, shawl. And then when she figured out the price, she was very dismayed. Now I do have super bulkies that are mainly acrylic with some wool, but they are heavy and this is very lightweight. This is Barocco Kodiak and it's an alpaca yarn. And then the gray cream are um, diamond, I think Embrace, which is also an alpaca blend. Now, the one thing I'm seeing is that the first <laughs> skein of Embrace went a lot farther because I had less stitches on the needle. Boy, this is really soft. Uh, the second skein didn't go nearly as far because I had a lot more stitches. So, I mean, who says that anything has to be completely symmetrical? Um, I'm fine with it. I could have, you know, in retrospect, did the first ribbing area um, a different color, but I really wasn't thinking. And then all of a sudden I was almost out of yarn and I had to think of a way to uh, do an edging that would hurry up Hi Hartley and look okay because I already, you know, when you knit for a yarn shop, you have to think about what people are going to think about that. They're going to add up the price and say, well, there's two skeins of Kodiak. There's three skeins of that. Do I really want to put that much into it? But it is a luxurious um, shawl. I kind of like when people wear the shawl and put a belt. It almost drapes and looks like a, a cardigan. Um, this pattern is by Michelle Meadows. She has nice patterns on, on a line and on Ravelry. And um, 
She also has some accessories that go with this too. Okay. And I almost thought about doing a, another color here. It was pretty blue, but you know, again, there's really no wrong way. You just have to figure it out. So if you're looking for a good um, free movies, if you have Amazon Prime or YouTube, there's a really good movie called Little Boy. And it's, I might have talked about this on my last podcast. It's about, um, a uh, little boy during the war, his dad goes off into the war and he's just not growing in height. And he's at that age where children have magical thinking and they think they can want something and it happens. And he wants his dad to come home and it's, it's worth watching. Last night, my husband and I watched Behind the Mask. It's a story around the time of the signing of the constitution and it's uh, based on some true facts of uh, the enemy working against the people trying to get independence and um, the loyalists, the patriots. And um, my husband thought it was called The Man Behind the Mask, but I'm pretty sure it was just called Behind the Mask. I had seen it before, he hadn't, but I enjoyed it so much again the second time. And the main character, he had a sordid past. He had a lot of blood on his hands and he wanted to be a different man, especially when he fell in love and he wanted to be the kind of man that was worthy of her. We also watched a Western and it was kind of movie night. And that kind of had the same theme. This man had a lot of blood on his hands and he wanted to be different. He was with um, a um, outlaw when he died and the man begged him to abandon that way of life. So they both kind of had the same. Um... Another movie we watched over the past month was The Holiday with Cameron Diaz and I can't think of her name, about two women that switch homes during Christmas and Cameron Diaz is leading man was really charming and handsome. And so that morning at the yarn shop, we had book club and I had picked out a book called the talented Mr. Ripley. And when I got to his first murder, <laughs> excuse me, I have allergies. I think my makeup's running. It was 1.30 in the morning, I'm reading it, and I was just overcome by the cruel, cruelty of it. And I had trouble moving on through the book. Now, I'm not weak. I, I, you know, I've read murder mysteries and all of that, but this guy just was so cruel. And the man he murdered was his friend. And so, I called Sharon. Sharon was in the book, book club because I picked out the book. And I went to tell her I was sorry. It's funny because Holly, Holly didn't finish reading it either. And when I told her the exact page I stopped at, she, that's the exact page she stopped at. I mean, it got all these good ratings. And when I went back and looked at the ratings, there was one woman that said, hey, this guy you know, this guy was a creep and he didn't pay for what he did now. And there were lots of books about him and his evil behavior. And um, so when I called Sharon, Sharon said, oh, I'm enjoying it. I mean, I'm really getting into this guy's head. So I thought, okay. So we had the book club that morning. And then that night I came home and Paul and I watched The Holiday. And when I looked up the main man, he played in the talented Mr. Ripley, along with Matt Damon. Oh, coincidences. Oh, this beautiful yarn is Amatola Grande. It's a Louisa Harding yarn, I think. 
Uh, there's also a sport weight version. It's a silk wool yarn. It self stripes. And it was really funny because this color, I've had this color at the shop for four years, five years. And I get it, I get this out to work on it during book club. And Sharon, hey Sharon, if you're watching, Sharon used the same yarn to make a cow, the same color. It's like, are we soul sisters or what? This is a crochet pattern that's free on Ravelry called the Mindless Scarf. Very easy. And I really enjoyed doing this so much. I had a great time. I like the pattern. It truly is mindless. I like all the colors in this yarn. I'm always amazed by the people that put colors together because pinks, light purple, and it's also disappointing that the intensity of the colors don't show, but I would have never thought to put browns and golds with pinks and purples. Um, it almost reminds me of two different skeins of yarn, but it works. So that's the mindless scarf. And I think maybe lastly is, I was working on this before. It's a talkie pattern and it'll end up with a turtleneck. And it's a yarn called Atmosfera. And Knitting Fever ran it on sale instead of $19 um, a ball. It's like $10. And I said to my husband, well, what do you think? Are these my colors? Because if I walked into a store and saw this sweater, I don't probably wouldn't buy it. And yet I just wanted to bust outside of my normal colors that I buy. And this is actually one skein. So I'm about ready to finish off the bottom and then do the rest. So I think it will only be a two skein project. This is really super soft. It's an alpaca uh, blend. Oh my goodness. It's, I'm thinking about naming one of my sheep characters, Butta, <laughs> not Butter, but Butta. And she'll be the bulky, the representative for the bulky yarn. And I'm just having so much fun thinking of these characters in my head and hoping I can draw them and, um, thinking about what they're going to look like. And I had read a book one time called Sylvia's Farm. It's a great book if you ever get to read it. This woman is trying so hard to make a farm work. And the sheep had really fancy names like Lady Pettigrew, whatever. I'm like, wow, yeah. So let me see if there's anything else here. Oh, yeah, but some things are upstairs. If I go up there, I'll wake my husband up and he'll yell at me. What are you still doing up? Um, this is Sunday and usually we go to church and but they're calling for snow. And when I put the dog out, it felt like light rain. But when he came in, it was just covered with snow. And um, it's not just that they're calling for it to be very slippery. So we'll probably end up being at home. I hate that because I really look forward to church, just seeing everybody and, and you always get something out of the word of God. It just so helps you with your life and this creativity that I'm experiencing. Like that just comes from God. He puts things in your mind. And so I guess it's about that time. It's funny, most of my shows last about 35 minutes and I'm looking at the clock, it's 34, 18. And yet other people do these podcasts and they're like two hours and 18 minutes. I don't know. If you have any suggestions, let me know because as you know, I don't have a lot of viewers and I'm trying to bring my personality to this podcast instead of just talking, you know, technically, you know, I did this, I did this many stitches, I did that. Um, 
We take the two grandchildren to church with us and I enjoy them so much and they keep me disciplined. I mean, they come flying out of the house with coats and hoodies and hats and dropping stuff and they're all excited and they pile into the car. And when I told them the story about the cat, they were laughing. What other funny stories do you have, Grandma? And then they tell funny stories too. So they're a lot of fun. And uh, I got into a habit. I have all these grandkids that I don't see. I have 19 grandkids. There are six children between us. And the oldest is in his early 20s. Michaela's in college. Evan's a senior. The twins are juniors and and so forth. And I don't see them. I'm not getting the interaction I want. So I have a friend named Margaret Ann. Margaret Ann, if you're watching, hi. And she would send me these uh, cute little memes that said like, happy Sunday or happy Tuesday. So I got an idea, all the kids my, and grandkids, on Sunday, I will send them, I'll dig up old photos, which the more time goes on, the more I realize those photos you take years ago of the children and all, they're really for later times when you say, oh, we were so young, they were so cute. Where was that taken? And I send a picture of one of the photos and, and say, happy Sunday. And then of course they write back, happy Sunday. And you get to talk a little bit. I would have never thought of doing that. And some more interactive than the others. And, um, so yeah, it's nice. And Gabby, my granddaughter that I made this for turned 10 and she has a sister, Lila and Lila got a, um, hamster and I'm going to crochet her a little hamster. There's pattern on Ravelry called Hamish the hamster. And then there's one, is it him where he's holding the little strawberry? And then I want to do the little house and felt it. And she is so excited about this that I need to get this done because she said, oh, I'm so happy. So yeah, if you can make somebody happy with your talent, that's the way to go, right? So for lack of anything else to say, have a great week and I'm looking forward to more snow here. We got snow last weekend and then the next day we got a lot more snow and we still have snow piled up. But anyway, my new little dog, I wish I, should I go grab her? Do you mind? Just give me one second. I probably should have paused, but she looked like a little, <laughs> she used to look like a little uh, English sheepdog, and now she has her hair cut, and she's so cute. She has these big eyes and a button nose, and uh, she snores like a, like a truck. And when she's happy, she chortles. But this little girl loves the snow. Oh, she goes outside and I keep looking outside like, when is she coming in? When is she coming in? After she got her hair cut, her harness just hung on her. She didn't even look like the same dog. And after she got her hair cut, then she's, oh, the only dog I ever met that does not like to be pet on her head. She'll shake her head. I'm not sure why. But she's a little cutie. She's a, a, a Shih Tzu. And I've never had one before. And she's a good girl. She, oh, yep, you pet her head. And that's kind of what happened. I woke you up. I'm sorry. So her name was Candy. And we changed it to, we changed it to Sandy. And uh, she has a little plume tail that's so cute. And, uh, 
Yeah, the dogs, the dogs and the cats bring a lot of joy. So, signing out. Shine, baby, shine. Have a great week. Bye-bye.